meat, cheese, milk, eggs. They're the protein-rich foods we were raised on. But instead of making us strong, are these foods making us sick? That's the blockbuster claim life changer Dr. Colin Campbell and his medical student son, Tom, make in the China study. The most comprehensive health and nutrition study ever conducted. A stunning 30-year endeavor partnering Cornell and Oxford universities and concluding your diet can reverse cancer and heart disease, even get you off medications for diabetes and MS. Now he's explaining the dangers of an animal protein diet to best-selling wellness author, extras Kathy Preston. You saying that animal protein causes cancer? Yes, when it's consumed in excess of the amount of protein we need. And most of us eat two and a half times the amount we need. It shifts the balance of hormones. It increases the rate at which cells divide and grow as part of the cancer process. At each step, more animal protein created more trouble. What would you say to a mother who's giving her baby or child milk to build strong bones and grow. I said dairy is not a good food at any age, especially for children. The countries that consume the least dairy have the lowest rates of osteoporosis. The National Dairy Council strongly disagrees, telling Extra the bone health benefits of daily dairy consumption have been established for decades. Is there really hope that you could reverse the process of cancer or heart disease with a diet? You certainly can with heart disease. Almost 100% of diabetics, once they switch to a plant-based diet, can get off their insulin. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. They were able to suspend and stop multiple sclerosis in 95% of the cases. Suspend or stop it? Or stop it. It's almost like food as medicine. Food, food as medicine. medicine. It's the revolutionary approach giving hope to patients everywhere. Turning to a plant-based diet, you're saying, is up there with perhaps surgery and chemotherapy? Yes. Just one of the blockbuster claims Dr. Colin Campbell and his son Tom make to special correspondent Kathy Freston and in their book, The China Study. This information is vastly superior to the way that we now do things. But get this, according to the current government food pyramid, you're looking at an acceptable day's worth of nutrients. And of course this food is, is toxic. I mean, literally, it's toxic. Colin Campbell spent 30 years researching plant-based nutrition and illnesses like cancer, heart disease, and diabetes. Not only do they prevent these diseases, but they can actually suspend them when they're already present. For optimal health, Dr. Campbell says stick with antioxidant rich colored vegetables, fruits, potatoes, and whole grains. What to stay away from? I would say dairy, meat, too uh, much you alcohol. Know, I might throw in soda, refined yeah. sugars. So, how much do you know about nutrition? What do you think makes you stronger, meat or vegetables? Definitely a meat eater. Meat. Vegetables. Can you get protein from plants? No. Yes. Yes. Cohen admits calcium is good for you, he says. Leafy green vegetables have lots more calcium than milk. If you look at nature's perfect food, human breast milk, there are 33 milligrams of calcium per 100 gram portion. Potato chips have 40, beans have 50, chickpeas 150, uh, amarantha grain has 267. Cohen says dairy products are a poor source of calcium for another reason. Every scientist in the world knows that protein inhibits calcium absorption and milk is liquid meat. It's protein. What is in milk that you say is poisonous and why would the government be covering this up? Well, what's in milk? You're drinking body fluids from other animals. 60% of the cows in America have leukemia virus. 80% have something called paratuberculosis. You don't want to eat something with that name, paratuberculosis. You've got irritable bowel syndrome in America. That's what it causes. Four million American women have irritable bowel syndrome. You're talking about if your doctor said, I want you to eat today 53 slices of bacon because that cholesterol is good for you, you're eating from your dairy products the same cholesterol contained in 19,000 slices of bacon this year. By age 52, one million slices of bacon's worth of cholesterol. You don't want that in your body. No, I don't. What's in the milk I'm drinking? What's in it? If you ask the author of this controversial new book, you may not want to hear the answer. The milk we're drinking is filled with fat. We know that. Cholesterol. We don't know it's filled with virus, bacteria, powerful growth hormones, proteins that cause a vast array of allergies in the human body. This is not nature's perfect food. In a book called Milk, the Deadly Poison, Robert Cohen attacks what's long been considered the perfect food, claiming it can be a dangerous brew of chemical, biological, and bacterial agents that may also contain a growth hormone he believes can trigger the growth of cancer. We know children come into puberty earlier in America. We don't know why. Every sip of milk 
they're drinking, in addition to this most powerful growth hormone, 59 different bioactive hormones. What nations have the highest rates of breast cancer in the world? I ask people, they say, eh, United States, uh-uh, Denmark, Norway, Holland, and Sweden. What nations have the highest rates of osteoporosis, crippling bone disease? Denmark, Norway, Holland, and Sweden. The dairy industry, every dairy farmer, and there are probably a few in the audience now, you know that for every 100 pounds of milk you produce, you gotta pay 15 cents to the national fluid milk processors. Doesn't sound like a lot of money. What are they doing with that money? It's $500 million a year to paint milk mustaches on the, the lips of models. Robert, welcome to To Your Health. Nice to be here. Mother says milk is good. What is this? Milk is no good. Let me tell you about milk. The number one protein in milk is casein, C-A-S-E-I-N. That's 80% of the protein in milk. That's the same glue they use to put a label on a bottle of beer. That's the same glue they use to hold your wooden furniture together. So we're drinking glue. You're drinking glue and you create so much mucus. This much casein, this much mucus. Okay, we're getting technical. <laughs> You're using a lot of chemicals. Yeah. What qualifies you to talk about these? Well, the greatest controversy in the history of the Food and Drug Administration was the genetic engineering of milk. I'm the only person in America to be invited to meet with a group of top scientists at FDA. I used to do research, $50 words, psychoneuroendocrinology, the study of brain and behavior, how hormones affect behavior. And I uncovered secrets. I opened up a Pandora's box of secrets that the dairy industry wishes had never had been opened. If milk is so bad, then how come everybody else is so wrong and so brainwashed that it's good for you? Well, they get calcium Ripken to pose for his milk mustache. Spike Lee, Spike Lee, you got 500,000 kids in the New York area that have asthma. They're drinking this glue every day. Spike Lee, 95% of African Americans are lactose intolerant. How could he wear this milk mustache? This is a message. Money is spent by the dairy industry. If you're a doctor, you call their toll-free number, 800-Y-MILK. They'll send you $200 worth of free information. You call my toll-free number, 888-NOT-MILK. They'll get the truth. We're getting the message out as one voice to America. Milk does not do the body good. So, got milk? No. Not milk. Not milk. We have a phone number where people can reach you. Mm -hmm. And what is that? It's uh, toll-free. It's 888-NOT-MILK. Robert, thank you very much. Thank you. How do you lose so much weight? Uh, what kind of diet are you on? My, uh, the short answer is I went on essentially a plant-based diet. I live on uh, uh, beans, legumes, vegetables, fruit. I drink a protein supplement every morning, I, no dairy. I drink almond milk mixed in with fruit and a protein powder. So I get the protein for the day when I start the day out. And it changed my whole metabolism, and I lost 24 pounds. And I got back to basically what I weighed in high school. But I did it for a different reason. But, I mean, I wanted to lose a little weight, but I didn't ever dream this would happen. I did it because after I had this stent put in, I realized that even though it happens quite often that after you have bypasses, you lose the veins because they're thinner and weaker than arteries. The truth is that it clogged up, which means that the cholesterol was still calling buildup in my vein that was part of my bypass. And thank God I could take the stents. I don't want it to happen again. So I did all this research and I saw that 82% of the people since 1986 who have gone on a plant-based, no dairy, no meat of any kind, no chicken, turkey, I eat very little fish. Once in a while I'll have a little fish, not often. If you can do it, 82% of the people who've done that have begun to heal themselves. Their arterial blockage cleans up. The calcium deposit around their heart breaks up. This movement has been led by a doctor named Caldwell Esselstein at the Cleveland Clinic, Dean Ornish, whom you know, out in California. The doctors Campbell, father and son, who wrote the China study, and a handful of others. But we now have 25 years of evidence. And so I thought, well, since I need to lose a little weight for Chelsea's wedding, I'll become part of this experiment. I'll see if I can be one of those that can have a self-clearing mechanism. We'll see. I hope you're healthy for many years and, and, and get to see grandchildren for many years. Me to too. Come. That's really the big deal. You know, I, Hillary and I, uh, we're happy. We love our son-in-law and we admire him. but And, and we, we'd like to be around if there's grandkids. We want to be there to do our part. President, good luck. Thank you. Thanks for what you're doing.